the entertainment highlight of the week. Red Ray Gun Limited presents The Benji and Nick Show. Hello. 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 Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good day. Good grief. Good trousers. <laughs> Good trousers. Nah, I'm not nesting this one, mate. Ah! Good trousers. You, you don't know I'm wearing trousers. <sighs> no, look, 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 I'm wearing trousers for the first time in days. As long trousers, I mean. Obviously, I've been wearing short trousers before. No, he just doesn't. I've just not been wearing trousers. It's the Benji and Nick show, very by chilly. the way. Hello, yes, good afternoon. Oh, damn, no, we've done that bit, we've done that bit. Hello, this is the <laughs> Benji and Nick show. Um, we are, uh, what, what, what are we, years. Nick? Tell them. Well, Tell the we people. are Benji and Nick. You're Benji, I'm Nick. And we um, talk about old TV, some current TV as well. And there are three kinds of podcast. Good ones, mediocre ones and bad ones. No, um, <laughs> we... We, at the end of the podcast, traditionally set ourselves something to watch before next week's podcast, and then the next week we discuss it. We have a good old chat about it. Give it exclamation marks out of five. Um, or we do a bit of commentary, usually for a lesser-known Doctor Who story featuring the music of Carrie Blyton. <laughs> yes, it certainly seems to be a running theme. <laughs> and um, So we'll have to do... Uh, we've done Death of the Daleks. We're in the middle of um, Revenge of the Cybermen. We'll have to do the Silurians next time. Um, and the other one is we talk about what we have been watching recently, which is usually a lot of old nonsense. And also we read out your emails uh, sent to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com, which we are going to do today. But also we are going to be discussing um, a slice of iceberg. It's weird to think of this as cult television, but it is a long time ago now. What is it? It's Cracker, the 1993 uh, crime drama series, which, in my opinion, changed the face of television. Um, It's one that I've wanted to do for a while uh, on the Benji and Nick show. Um, because it's just it is just so brilliant Uh, so looking forward to talking about that one we'll also be uh, phoning for no particular reason Jamie Anderson the son of Jerry Anderson the creator of Thunderbirds and all those fantastic Super Mario Nation series and also uh, UFO and Space 1999 He's very much the the long-suffering member of this podcast family (laughs) who every week bless him every week no matter what he's doing he does pick up the phone um, unless it's extreme circumstances. But, yeah. uh, and even then he usually picks it up and says, I can't talk to you now. The world's exploding, but I can't talk to you now. And then ends up having a chat anyway. Leg- <laughs> legend, legendary guy. So, shall we start with the emails? Well, I'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? Certainly. Shall I go first? Yes, go on then. Okay, then. Well, this one here is the subject of this one is podcast suggestion. Hi, Nick. Uh, Love your podcast. Would love if you recorded a video along with the audio. It would make for a fuller experience for viewers when there is visual and audio both. Thanks, O-Y. Or oi. 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 Thank you, oi. Ladies Um, present. If it were, it, we have talked about recording it on Zoom, haven't we? Yeah, it's it's that would certainly be interesting. I would be, um, I would not be opposed to that. Although I think what would be really nice would be to do like a video special or something like that, something yeah. with a bit more uh, pizzazz or just just something a little bit different. Well, like with you superimposing uh, Katie Manning's face on your face, which is what you were doing. A while back, when you were piddling around with the video functions, well, it, it, it was uh, you can. That you was can, quite alarming. No, you can do oh. the um, on Zoom. You can you can do chroma key, which is like green screen basically. And so yeah, I was just going through uh, whatever was in my uh, pictures folder, and there happened to be for some reason a picture of Katie Manning. Um, well, why I wouldn't mean, there who, be? Who doesn't have a picture of Katie Nin- Manning in there? Nineteen seventies Doctor Who icon. And there's a picture of Jamie Anderson in there as well, wasn't there? Jamie was uh, on the wall. And there was also what else was there? I had probably some old Doctor Who. There's just loads of old rubbish in there, really. Things that I, I usually the only images I've really got are things that I tweet out for certain reasons, usually in response to somebody's, usually as a silly comment. 
But um, yeah, video thing. I, uh, yeah, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to that. I think it'd be really interesting to do something. Um, okay, a live thing. I mean, I'd love to, I a think, live thing. Uh, you know, we could do a live video thing oh one day. Oh my goodness! I mean, it'd be nice anyway. You know, we talked as well about um, a live Benjamin Nick show. There's lots of things. There's lots yeah, of things we'd like, we'd to, like go to go to do. a venue and do it live. Definitely, definitely. Or, we think only five people would turn up though. Yeah, well, if it's a very small venue, we'll be all right, won't we? My shed. Come to my yeah, shed. Yeah, come to the I'm shed. Now. Shed sesh. <laughs> Have a shed shish. Shed sesh. Uh, yeah. But there's lo- lots of things. I mean, the, the ideal, although it would be so difficult with licensing, the ideal would, would be to, to watch something and then do a live analysis afterwards. But um, yeah, it's so difficult with license licensing. That, yeah. No, you couldn't do that. No. But we could do, you know, we could certainly do an event and have... have you know get some guests in so i could pull a few favors couldn't i definitely i think it would be good fun for people who would never speak to me again afterwards well that's all right just pick the people you don't <laughs> like it's fine it's a double whammy <laughs> you know, the people i don't like wouldn't want to come would they well fact, I like, people that I like you're planning everyone, on not so. liking anymore that's perfect oh yeah excommunicate a few people what you could bring them on stage and say i no longer want to be your friend and I yeah and it'd be really it in front awful. of these five people <laughs> it'd be really humiliating wouldn't it very deep down this is a very bitter podcast for the <laughs> two men who are just yeah we could do this we could really ruin someone's day yeah we've just come in front of the microphone to lance a an emotional boil I knew you'd do that. Sir, but <laughs> disgusting. You horrible Several people little have man. Just vomited. Sorry to use the word vomit, um, but uh, since you're well past it now, um, you won't have to worry about it turning up later. Well, thank you, Oi. Here's another one. Um, an email, I mean, not another Oi. Although I can say Oi anytime you like. Oi, Oi. Um, the dot 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 Avengers. This is from Alex Pass, who's taken the note of how I say the Avengers the in the Big Finish podcast. The Avengers. Yeah, Avengers. Mm. So, what's that? Um, uh, I realise I'm making a strange noise in the background. I've got some some old paracetamol containers that I'm creaking. And I thought I better uh, stop doing. It. I better own up to it and then stop doing it. Better own up to your it. your painkiller. Otherwise, you thinking. think. I've got some strange, you know, thing attached to me that's making a weird noise. Um, you know, the the Baron. Have you ever seen the Baron? No. An old ITC series. No, I've not. No, I've not. And that starts with a car noise. So it could be the. Anyway, what am the I talking about? Alex I live on the is... noisiest street on earth at the moment. I've got chainsaws, drums, <laughs> shouting. The man next door who just spends his whole time in the garden saying, yeah, 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 on the phone. And that's basically all he says is just, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So would you, I've Many had to, my window is face while you were doing that. my window is shut at the moment and I am suffocating because I don't want to hear somebody saying yeah 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 <laughs> the yeah 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 man yeah 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 man yeah yeah Alex yeah. Alex Pass enters into the spirit of the Loch Ness game, um, which I'm sure you all understand fully if you do write in because we don't. Um, uh, in the beginning of his email, he says, "Good evening, John Pertwee voice. Good grief." Good gravy. Goodness. Tom Baker voice. Loch Ness. Ah, 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 ah. Terror of the Zygons. Hello, Benji and Nick. In your recent podcast, Nick mentioned a recent purchase of Series 4 of 60s gem, The Avengers. The Avengers. And I thought I'd throw out a recommendation or four. Look out for Series 5. Yeah. This was the first time the show was made in colour. Although at the time, very few people were actually able to watch it in anything other than black and white. That's so true. I remember being very confused by what it said. In colour at the beginning, I thought, well, so? <laughs> and? <laughs> li- life's in colour, so what? <laughs> in colour and black and white. If you hear some funny noises here, it's um, Benji's dog, Rosie, getting a little bit agitate. Yeah, anyway, while that, while the... Does she want to have a cuddle? She might do. Come here. No, she doesn't. No, she no no. She's what, what she wants to do is she him. she wants she she wants me to open the door, but she can't yes. because we have people that don't like dogs here. If only you could explain that to her. 
Well, quite, quite. Anyway, carry on with the email. Anyway, episodes particularly worth mentioning are From Venus with Love, starring John Pertwee as a barmy brigadier. How about Excellent. That? I'm great, up for that. It? I've got to buy this. Uh, Never Never Say Die, starring horror legend Christopher Lee oh, as Mr. On. Jago, himself, as Casey would say. That's in the talents of Wang Chiang. Uh, Christopher Benjamin oh, in Return of the Cybernauts. Oh, sorry. I've completely misread that. Is Christopher Benjamin in it? Is that what he means? I don't know. Anyway, Return of the Cybernauts, starring Peter the Cakes Cushing. Wow. I don't think Peter Cushing has ever been referred to as Peter the Cakes The Cakes! We are referring to Doctor Who and the Daleks, in which Peter Cushing starred as Doctor Who. And Mission Highly Improbable where Kevin Stoney and Nicholas Courtney have problems with a shrink ray. Oh, I remember on. that one. Yeah, yeah. It's all a bit balmy, but enormous fun. A bit like your wonderful selves. Mayhap. 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 All the best, gents. I look forward to your wise words on Revenge of the Cybermen Part 4 in a couple of weeks' time. Cyber Leader. It is good. Dun-dun-dun. Sent from Big Al's Bat Cave. Holy pile of Blu ray, Batman. <laughs> P.S. I'm surprised Nick didn't mention the new Avengers episode, Nors, where writer, that's G N A W S, Nors, where writer Dennis Spooner does a reworking of his Thunderbird story, Attack of the Alligators. Perhaps Mr. Briggs still hasn't had. Uh, it still has that joy to come. I have. I remember it at the time. Yeah, I'm going to watch that tonight. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. I <laughs> the PS. Uh, that's, can you see the joy it has brought into my He's life? Got a huge smile on his face. It's funny. I was <laughs> I was out um, on a. <sighs> oh, Rosie. What's it? She doesn't like she doesn't like being in this room because she associates it with being shut in. Because when people don't like dogs. Uh, and around she has to spend time with me in here bless her yes poor poor little dog i was out on a um a stag do um uh last weekend and um one of the chaps on the do dave said to me he said oh yeah he said uh saw you were uh doing the avengers on your podcast he said yeah what was the verdict and um i said oh i said well and then i ended up spending a good sort of 15 to 20 minutes talking about everything that we'd said about the avengers and he said yeah because uh, my friend dave's um he's a really talented musician um he said yeah he said uh laurie johnson's music he said yeah that you know absolutely incredible i said well I said, that's pretty much what we talked about for a large yes. portion of the podcast <laughs> so clearly uh clearly he's you know he's on the same page absolutely so we got another email here, and um, this mm. one is from Mark Crozer. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> um, that's what we once I uh, once uh, went. It was Halloween, and um, this isn't in the email. This is just something to say. It was once it was Halloween, and um, me and my friend Tom we were going out, and we we couldn't figure out a, a good costume to do quickly. <laughs> so we both put on dressing gowns and just painted our faces white with a bit of blood, <laughs> and went out and, and, as as just people who died in their sleep was the idea. And so everybody we met, we we would say, "Good morning." <laughs> like that, I thought, you know, morning, as in uh, morning, so I'm a good morning. Very good. So, uh, yes, email here. Hello, Benji and Nick. Uh, just been listening to the latest edition of your wonderful podcast here in my adopted home of Brooklyn, New York, and felt compelled to let you know how much I enjoy the show. I stumbled across your podcast early last year, and it has quickly become the entertainment highlight of the week for me. Oh. And I listen an awful lot. Of, I listen to an awful lot of radio. Believe me. Well, oh, that's great. What a compliment! The entertainment highlight of the week. <laughs> uh, great to hear you're talking so enthusiastically about the Avengers. I absolutely loved the show when I was growing up, particularly the Steed slash Emma Peel seasons. Uh, not so much the Tara King ones, uh, and I don't really remember ever seeing any of the Honor Blackman episodes. Mm. I may have to watch the new Avengers now after your glowing reappraisal, as I've never seen any of those episodes either. It's in- it's interesting that Rick Davey of the Unmutual, he absolutely recommends the Tara King ones, doesn't he? He's not so keen on Emma Peel, but maybe he remembers seeing those first, so it's the whole thing of the emotional attachment, you know. I think there's horses for courses, you know, there are so many things as well. Some people <laughs> like people like different things, don't they? 
you know, it's Doctor Who all over again, isn't it, really? Some people love love a bit of Colin. Some people like a bit of Tom. Some people like a bit of Hartnell. You know, people like it all. Which so, bits? Well, the feet, uh, the left earlobe, <laughs> and not the right one, Christ. No. Um, <laughs> there are standards. Good Lord, no. Um, oh, oh, there goes... Rosie Rosie again. Again. It's very quiet just, on your mic, I don't think. You know, yeah, well, she's she yeah, she's she's a very quiet dog. Uh, we've got carrying on with the email here, so this is where she's gonna be really loud. Um Benji, I was surprised to hear you talking about the WWE <laughs> this week. Not not sure if you watch regularly, but if if so, you might have seen me performing my song Live in Fear at WrestleMania back in twenty fourteen as wrestler Bray Wyatt walked to the ring to fight John Cena. No way. Now that <laughs> now that is thoroughly cool. That is I knew very this cool. Way. I knew you'd like this. <laughs> that is good. Yeah, that was good WrestleMania that one. Bray Wyatt making a great return at the moment. Just thought I'd add that one in. I don't um, know what he's talking about. Don't know what he's talking about there. It's good to, good time to be a wrestling fan, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Um if 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 you're a wrestling fan you'll know that from the craziness that is going on in the the world right now. Um mm. it is Good, but good. To, it's like a real life soap opera going on with two co- with two companies fighting each other. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, also, um, you were talking polite, about Look and noise, Read yeah. recently, so I thought that you might be interested to hear a remix I did, uh, totally unauthorized, a couple of years ago of Derek Griffith's theme from The Boy from Space. Oh, should we have a listen? Definitely. I mean, not for the listeners, just for us. Open link. Right, I'm opening it. It's rather good, isn't it? Benji's still listening. It's Um, really funky. The trouble is, I don't know the original, so I don't know. Do you know the original? I do know the original. Yeah, yeah. Is it very different this version? It's a little bit different, but he totally he totally rocks it. It's all the wonderful synthy stuff. It's just he mm. absolutely shoots out of the park. It sounds awesome. What a legend! What a legend! I love. I've got such appreciation for for musicians and people that mm, people that too. shake things up. Or, I love people as well that recreate things. I just think it's so. As, as a fan of doing that myself, there's a certain art to that. I think. Carrying on with the email here. Um, this is going to sound uh, like a slightly off-topic question, but do either of you remember the 1950s American TV show Champion the Wonder Horse, do you? Uh, which used to be shown regularly on weekend mornings on BBC One or possibly BBC Two in the 70s and early 80s? Um, do I remember it? No, not at all. I, I know of it because um, it's sort the of... The theme. Uh, you know the theme, do you? Go, I don't Champion know. the Wonder Horse. <laughs> Just like that. Go on, look it up. Look up the theme. (laughs) That's because someone mentioned that when I was teasing about what I was working on at the moment, Rob Shearman came on and said, if it's not champion the Wonder Horse, I'm going to be really cross. (laughs) 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 Which was like really citing. I mean, I loved it as a kid. It was on television all the time in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. And it had a little boy and a, and a, you know, a tough dad and champion would always do some. I don't think champion talked or anything stupid like that, but it was a really, have you got it? I like it. It's quite funky, isn't it? It's, a, you know, it's, it's got a little bit of a, a Western vibe to it. It was massively popular. How many series did they make of it? Or did it just get repeated a lot? Champion the Wonder Horse. All these things got repeated to death, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, Syndication. Champion of the Wonder Horse was the on-screen companion of singing cowboy Gene Autry in 79 films between 1935 and 52 and 91 television episodes um, (laughs) of the Gene Autry show. In addition, Champion starred in 26 episodes of his own television series, The Adventures of Champion. There you have it, yeah. So, So Champion was a legend, basically. See, I'm more familiar with a different talking horse. Um, Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed, yeah. Mr. Ed the talking horse. I, I never really 60s. saw that. That was earlier, wasn't it? That's very early, yeah. Mr. Ed was uh, 61, Mr. Ed. Oh, so it wasn't because Champion the Wonder Horse is uh, 1950s. 
But Mr. Ed, on the other hand, uh, did six uh, seasons, would you believe? Craziness. Nick's just got a message from Champion the Wonder Horse. Sorry, I just had a, t a WhatsApp message there from our head of marketing at Big Finish. Um, yes. <laughs> Let's imagine Champion the Wonder Horse. I can hear you talking about me. <laughs> um, email here, there we go. Um, the reason I ask is that I've mentioned this show many times to my American friends and they've never heard of it. Even, even my father-in-law, who was a boy in the 1950s and an avid TV watcher, had never seen it. I remember finding it quite boring, yet I would sit and watch it every week never, nonetheless. Curious to know your thoughts on the subject, if you have any. We've all got those programmes, haven't we? The ones that are really boring, but yet yeah. we, we watch them regardless. You know, just, well, in yeah, the old days of television, it was your, it, that's what you had to do because there was no, there was no alternative. <laughs> you just had to watch the thing that was on television because, you know, the other two channels or the other one channel, in my case, around about that time, uh, there was, there was, oh no, there was a BBC Two by then, wasn't there? But yeah, gosh, isn't it funny that Americans don't know about it and it's as, as American as you like. It's you know it's a it is through and through an American series and yet they don't know it. But it's like um, got repeated a lot here. It's yeah. like you know in other countries, for example, in in Germany, um, in Germany they they really love Gilligan's Island, and that's not particularly that big over here. Yeah, and I've it, never seen Gilligan's Island. And the big one is that that um, all my German friends keep going on about um, they keep going on about um, this really famous. Really, I was doing this in inverted commas. Comedy called Dinner for One. That's they play on Christmas Day, don't they? Yeah, they love they love Dinner for One, but it's yeah. it's it's really rubbish, isn't it? It's just a man pretending to be drunk. But it's but it's got nothing to do with England at all. That's what's that's what's no. so funny. It's not it was it's made by by Germans. It's not even mm. English. It's very strange. Very strange. Very strange. Um, should we talk about cracker now? Yes, we should. Well, thanks for that email, by the way, Mark. Um, yes, thank yeah. you. Sorry uh, yeah, to let's... toss you to one side like that, Mark. That was very rude of me. Yes, I think it is now time for Cracker. And that was Cracker. Excellent. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's a Cracker. Uh, um, uh, it's absolutely... If you've not if you've not watched Cracker before, I highly recommend it. It is a brilliant um, crime uh, series based around a criminal psychologist... Um, Fitz, played by Robbie Coltrane, who is just the most fantastically flawed character. He is mm. just incredible. He drinks too much, he smokes too much, and he is addicted to gambling. Yeah. And he is just, he's overweight, he's, he's everything, he's just a, a thoroughly unhealthy looking man. Yeah. Um, but is just fantastic. He's just, everything about his character is just superb. Am I right in thinking that up until this point, Robbie Coltrane was only really known as a comedy performer? Well, this is what I I was thinking, and I think is is your absolute bang on the money because Coltrane was involved with a lot of the kind of um, Ben Elton comedy things and Black mm -hmm. Adder, wasn't he? He did he did a lot of that sort of vibe. And this, yeah, obviously this was a big thing for him and absolutely changed the course of his career, undoubtedly Definitely. so. Um, as a lot of people in this as well. Um, so I guess you're probably right, yeah. I mean, had he already... Had he already been in the Bond films? <coughs> or did no, he get the definitely Bond films not. Bond films was in the 2000s. That was World Is Not Enough he did, wasn't it? Yeah, so he got... Uh, he was in two of them, actually, wasn't he? Well, interestingly enough, um, the other thing as well was that... Um, because obviously he was Hagrid in Harry Potter. Oh, of course I'd forgotten. And I that, remember I don't really like Harry Potter. <gasps> Bless for me. Yes. Well, I remember at the time thinking um, it's interesting how he's Hagrid in Harry Potter, but also mm. um, uh, Jane Penhaligon, um, which is Fitz's sort of love interest in mm. Cracker. Um, she plays Harry's mum uh, in yes. the, in Harry Potter. So it's like so the, clearly there is some. I think there is some cracker influence there. Thinking, Do you those, yeah, he well, calls they're both character Panhandle, doesn't he? Penhandle, Pan -handle. Jane Penhaligon, Panhandle. Classic. They have an affair, her. don't they? They have a fantastic affair. Yes, they do. Um, in one of the in one of the later episodes, I remember she did does something. 
because it's all very emotionally extreme. There's a point where he gets very nervous about her driving, doesn't he? And there's a point where she just tur- she's driving really fast and she just turns and looks at him. And she maybe doesn't... I don't know whether she lets go of the steering wheel. It's not in this episode. It's in a much later episode. Whether she lets go of the steering wheel, but she certainly just looks at him and not at where she's driving and just goes faster and faster and faster and just look. It's because she's she's just ready to let go and for both of them to die at that point. And then she comes back from it and slows down. But it's one of the most powerful moments I've ever seen on television, full stop. And... Uh, while I was watching this first episode, I was reminded that that is on the way. I've got the full box set, so I'm going to watch them. It is, it's inc- it's so beautifully made, and it shocks me that it's so old, because it is also television from another era. It's it's who was the director? Is it Michael Winterbottom? I think so. Right? Yeah, um... and of course he went on. I, this must have launched his serious career. And it shows all the sight that each, you know, it's it's like a movie, really. It is like yeah. shot on film as well, so it's got yeah. that movie look. Um, it's it's very ambitious. A lot of kind of helicopter shots of trains and, and things like that. Yes, I mean, there's there's every- they didn't have drones in those days, did they? they no, it was big. Get up there with a helicopter big deal um yes it was michael winterbottom um yeah. everything about it though as well all of the cast in this are just superb there's no, nothing is wrong about this series and i think that's what makes it so good you've got robbie coltrane who, who knocks it out the park as fits this sort of obnoxious uh he, but you love him as well don't you oh you love him you know he's he's completely flawed but you love him you've got his family haven't you um yeah. you know uh with the, you know all them kind of rubbing up you know the good for nothing son um is it <laughs> Value barbara, F- uh, flynn? barbara flynn the who plays his wife who's amazing she's who amazing in everything as we've life. said she's before just she's just superb, she's superb she? in that i just you know when you mention her name i just want to immediately phone someone up and get her to come in and do something immediately i think i think barnaby edwards just worked with her recently for a big finish thing get it's her in Thompson, get her in for yeah. more just keep yeah, that's the second in. time he's employed her i think you know, she's just marvelous a real class act and a delightful person brilliant um and also who else we got we've got christopher eccleston as well christopher eccleston yes he's so DCR young and fluffy well it's quite an early role for him isn't it he's he's looks incredibly young in this and uh, uh i think a, a launching point for him as well a real change in trajectory um, at this point obviously if you know uh, what happens to him later on then mm. you know it's quite big stuff it is I mean it's a really clever thing for them to do to build this character up and then and then do what they do they kill him alright look they kill him off in spot. one of the in probably the best episode of the series yeah and um, it's a horrific death as well isn't it and it's so tense and so who now, did the music for it let's um, I can tell you this because um, I, lo- I love the music in um in cracker and so i actually i bought the cd of it but the cd isn't available in england there's only the only release they ever did of it was in germany um uh for the cds just Mind it's God. called fit it's just called fits in germany so oh. the title is for Alla Fala fits and the music is by us oh, but oh that's right yes of course it's they do different um episodes have different people doing the music so you I like get that approach you get different things in there but um music's well, great in them all mm. it's great in, for this particular episode i can tell you the music was by um i mean bizarrely even though it's a 90s thing a lot of stuff from the 90s sounds quite dated to us now and it, though it is it has a dated quality to it it's so right for the drama it doesn't get in the way and this was a great first story, presumably written by the person who created Cracker, who is a famous writer, <laughs> whose name I forget. Jimmy uh, McGovern, isn't it? Jimmy McGovern, of course! Just a, an amazingly famous uh, writer, brilliant work. That's and, what, I uh, actually can't tell you who did the music, only oh. that um, I can tell you who did all the, the silly songs in it, like, um, not silly songs, the you know the background things all the this jazzy singing i can't actually tell you who did the music for this particular one 
I think the reason not the music of the 90s sounds incredibly dated um, mm. is because um, at that time um, there was you'll find that early early 90s late 80s um, the Korg M1 synth- synthesizer came out which is an amazing amazing sample based sy- synthesizer um, which was just great at replicating uh, real instruments um, and I still use it to this day for a lot of my projects I still use it because it's just mm. a, it's an absolute workhorse so you'll find that now it's it's possible for people you can get in multiple composers to be able to write music on budgets and do things yeah, without yeah. without big bands and orchestras and so what a lot of the BBC's output and ITV by this point is um is different but of course the drawback of that is you look years later and you think yeah that's that's very dated now you can hear those sounds is what you're saying you can hear those sounds but with with cracker you know they're each episode's slightly different they've all got really good hooks in them and they've they've all got individual elements which which work and of course adrian dunbar is in this who uh plays the central suspect in it and that's a rather fascinating story isn't it and i think adrian dunbar does an amazing job well, I was actually going to... That's exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say, for this particular episode, as I was say, for me, the standout um, performance goes to him, actually. Because mm. um, he he just... he Not only does he, he do uh, play the role convincingly, but also he really swerves you so many times. You really don't actually know what's going on no, with him. No, we won't spoil that, I don't think. No, yeah. it's not worth spoiling, but, he's, but he's very, he does such a good job in it. And... Um, or should we spoil it? <laughs> or should we should we He's just Batman? He That's is Batman in the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, interestingly, of course, that he's since become much more famous on British television in Line of Duty, which you don't watch, do you? I don't watch Line of Duty. It's on my list but, of things to watch. Yeah, but he's one of the main characters in that and has become beloved by the audience and a, a very you know what I mean. Everyone knows him. It's interesting that I met Adrian because he came in and did uh, a big finish. Um, with Paul McGann and he and Paul were old friends from either from drama school or early theatre days or something and um, he and I in, in those days I was doing the behind the scenes interviews and uh, Adrian was very uh, quite a challenge to interview because he just wanted to take the mickey out of everything you know he gave plenty of answers I got plenty out of him but it was all it was all done with a slightly wry expression and I didn't know quite whether he was taking the mickey out of me or <laughs> production or you know what I mean and he was being he did a lot of being very over sincere and, and I think uh, he and um, uh, Paul McGann had a very fun time on that recording it was called um, Brave New Town I'm pretty sure it was called yes and I think he plays an army commander in it or something I think that's right yeah He's great. I mean, again, the testament to to Cracker. Everybody's good in it. There isn't a yeah. bad performance, and there isn't uh, certainly in this episode. I didn't look at anybody and think, "Oh, I don't know about that casting decision." No, no, no. It's all good, isn't it? It's Beautifully like, um, shot. Very uh, cinematic. It's very cinematic. It looks gorgeous. Another character, of course, in there, um, D. S. Beck, played by Lorcan Cranit- uh, Um who is just a hateful, hateful uh, character. He is. He's just, oh my God, and, and especially as time goes on, you learn more about him. But in this, you know, you've got the, the scenes of the good cop, bad cop, sort of, uh, yeah. between him and Christopher Eccleston. Uh, oh, it's just so good. It's just so good. It's. it's uh, I'm going to continue watching it as well. I, I think in the next episode, what's the, is the next one? The Big Crunch. I can't remember. I don't know. Um, actually, I haven't got the box set to hand. I meant to bring it out to the shed, but since it's raining, it's raining. It's that. It's that day in July. Do you remember? Yeah. It's, it's not raining here yet. Um, oh, it's absolutely tipping it down here since about five o'clock in the morning. Woke me up. Oh, the next one is um, to say I love you. Um, that really, that really good one with. Um, is it the it's like the couple that would die for each other oh, sort of goodness. Bonnie and Clyde sort of vibe yeah. going on isn't oh. it I mean this is the thing with watching crime stuff there is this and this is uh, to put in a word of criticism really on behalf of my wife that she always finds it she is finding it increasingly more difficult and I sympathise with her gratefully gratefully greatly gratefully. I gratefully sympathise with my wife um, the, the trouble with crime drama is that you know 
there have to be a lot of bad people in it and sometimes it gets a bit wearing watching flawed bad people you just think is there no one nice in this world and when you get into the intricacies and the darkness of what appalling people will do and also fits you know it, it, he is so self-destructive and see and his defense mechanism is to shrug it off even though you know deep down he's self-loathing and he just makes jokes about it all you know when he's when he just confesses that he's better away all their money and blah 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 and i love the, the way barbara flynn just goes mm -hmm, yeah fine leaves she, you know what i mean she just yeah, yeah, yeah you uh, we're going to your uh, grandmother's da, 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 all this kind of stuff she just the strength of that woman is incredible and when he goes to to beg her to come back and all this kind of thing and she just goes no no just won't have it and the you know the typical thing to do the dull thing to do in a drama would be to have her come back and for her to melt because he's so charismatic he is so charismatic but barbara flynn's character is several thousand times bitten even more times shy you know yeah. she is not having it and it is it's kind of exquisitely awful but to watch but it is really really well done but that is the trouble with crime drama you have to be in the right frame of mind for it and people invariably are crime drama is the most popular genre of anything anywhere well, i suppose as well with especially with um with cracker um you you do have the two elements of the, you, there's no particular escape from bad things and bad people because you've got the the crime element of that and the psychological aspect of this which is kind of what it's about is you know why do people do what they do and what yes. are they thinking what is going through their minds but yeah you don't get the escape because then every time the character leaves that he goes into this hideously hostile environment with his own marriage and his own personal life yeah yeah and so you don't get that happy ending at some no. points you think you do but it's it's just it's just, it's just brilliant and there are so many good stories in this as well mm. so many good episodes um to be somebody a series two opener um is absolutely just mind-blowing with um with uh robbie carlisle in that oh it's that one oh that's really that's horrific. that's as dark as it gets i think but is that the one when chris eccleston gets killed that is the one when chris yeah, eccleston gets yeah, killed so. in a supermarket um yeah. you've got the big crunch of maureen o'brien really weird episode that one about a cult a weird church cult oh yeah i remember that one. yeah I think, there's you know, so many good episodes the, the contrast the, the interesting contrast or contradiction within cracker like this first episode is that it's absolutely written with such perfect precision and does all the right things to thrill and draw you in and yet it also breaks all the rules because the discovery of who the perpetrator actually is is kind of just thrown away quite quickly isn't it and kind of like you know what I mean it, that wasn't so, yeah it wasn't about that was it necessarily no, and that's at that point you think oh god it's not about this is it it's very interesting the way it, yeah it, you know Jimmy McGovern is such an experienced and skillful writer that he absolutely knows when to play by the rules and when to just throw the rule book out of the window but because he's because the rules are ingrained in him he can he can run off the rails to to um, <laughs> use a bit of a pun considering that uh, the body is discovered on a train um you can run off the rails and still make it work and that, that is i uh, as someone who has aspirations to being a writer I, I marvel at that ability and and never cease to be impressed by it really so obviously i'm giving it five exclamation marks it's for me it's the absolute five out of five and i think yeah. the thing is as well is that you look and at mine is out of three thousand Pardon? No, was it? Oh, well, it's really low <laughs> down, isn't it? I, I didn't think... have the. Uh, I couldn't commit myself to that terrible joke. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's sort just of failed to say it properly. <laughs> a se a semi-joke. Um, I, I think <laughs> you know joke. the legacy of Cracker is that television was never quite the same afterwards. Because how could you? How could you do a crime drama, and like they'd been before Cracker? in the same way yeah. Cracker because it broke so many rules it did everything in a different way it had such strong characters and I really think it kind of one could argue though I suppose one could argue that Prime Suspect came out before Cracker mm. and that's equally as as 
different, I suppose. It was sort of breaking. something like the inheritor of the crown of prime suspects in a way, wasn't it? Definitely, a dysfunctional yeah. leading character. I mean, and of course, that is uh, an age-old thing within crime thriller, um, you know, cr- th- th- the crime thriller genre, where, you know, he's a maverick. <laughs> it's a cliche, is it? It's not, you know, because if you have, if it's the perfect cop or the perfect investigator or whatever profession, it's really dull. It becomes like um, a Francis Durbridge play where everyone in the Francis Turbridge play is always top of their very middle-class profession and everyone is perfect. And then there is one flaw within that situation that creates the the crime. But everyone, you know, whereas this is the opposite. This is the underbelly, isn't it? The, the seediness. And that, you know, that has been done since the, um, um, you know, 50s noir stuff and all the books all that's based on Philip Marlowe and all that you know so it's not a new thing but they sort of reinvent it definitely in Cracker and yeah you can't after Cracker you can't really do it as you say you can't do a crime thriller the same old way again you have to be influenced by Cracker it's a bit like the influence that Scandi noir stuff had on crime thrillers absolutely which brought about Broadchurch in this country which is very much an English crime thriller that tries to be like as good as a Scandi noir thing and, and, and consequently was extremely successful I think you've hit the nail on the head there and yeah so you know my message really for anybody is if you've not seen Cracker crack on crack on give it a go because unfortunately uh, it used to be on Netflix it's not anymore um, I'll double check for you because I'm a helpful soul but if not um, recommend getting the box set um, it's weird my, my box set's so old um, when, I, when I put it in there it had the old the old ITV logo that I forgot existed <laughs> the, really, the really boring corporate sort of blue one um, yeah it's not on Netflix so buy the DVD well worth it and I promise if you like crime drama you won't be disappointed it's lovely isn't it shall I see if uh, Jamie Anderson's about yeah go on squire see, see if he's about that tall uh, right dead tall dead tall did you say <laughs> Ooh. Nearly dropped my phone then. Mm-hmm. He's not going to reply. <gasps> wow. He said he was definitely going to be in. He must be in the middle of doing a podcast interview and he's thought, do you know what? Not today. I'm not interrupting it this time. Not for those reprobates. So, oh, hello. Oh. He's back. He's back. <laughs> You're just winding me up. Oh, no, I was having a moment. Okay. <laughs> we'll go no further than that. I don't think we should. How are you? Good, good, yes. Um, what do you think we should do next week in the podcast? Uh, turn things on their head and make it uh, the Nick and Benji show <laughs> and, and, and review something completely trashy and contemporary uh, rather than something cult. See what your reaction is to an episode of Love Island. <laughs> We're not doing that, are we, Benji? Oh, no, <laughs> don't think so. Don't want to give them my viewing figures. Well, it doesn't have to be that. But... Well, thanks for that suggestion. Great pleasure. Bet you wish you hadn't asked now. Yeah. What have you been watching recently? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> the wall. I've had any time to Your watch Your computer anything. screen. Uh, yeah. I, I, I tried. Well, I watched Strange Things 3, obviously. Oh, yes. Yeah. Which we, that was good. Yeah, we liked that, didn't we? We communicated yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, but not, not a lot else. It's terrible. Um, I haven't mm. even had time to watch my Patouille Blu-ray. Oh no, well I couldn't get mine to play on my computer so. Oh yeah, I saw And what? everyone's going, yeah, none of those BBC things play on computers um, Benji, have you got a random question for Jamie? Yeah, uh, if you could spend a day in an art, history or science museum Which one would you choose and why? Uh, oh, well I like all those 
those things, but science, I think, just because science is, to quote Richard Dawkins, <laughs> or I think he was quoting an editor of New Scientist, uh, science is interesting, and if you don't agree, you can <clears throat> off. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, That's funny. And, and it is. I mean, it's just, just, you know, stuff about the world around you immediately and how everything works. It's just crazy awesome. That's why. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. That's a good message for the world. Moving. <laughs> I, I should have sworn so you could bleep it out. Never mind. <laughs> Just to give him some editing notes. Are you satisfied with that answer? Ben? I'm. I'm. Sa- I'm satisfied. I feel it was well. You know, well meaning and uh, a good, a good message for society, isn't it? Really. <laughs> that is my general um, nature and raison d'être. I'll ask him one more because it came up. I clicked next question and it popped up and it was, you, what's the best type of cheese? Uh, oh. Um, <laughs> now he's taking it seriously. I, 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 I'm very, very serious about this. I just can't remember. Um, it's, a, it's a soft cheese that is soaked in brandy. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> Now you uh, understand. And I just let me. I'm gonna have a look up the name. I I had some in the fridge about two weeks ago. And and it poise. That's what it's called. It poise. Oh, how do you spell that? Um, e p o i double s e s. A pungent, soft paste, cow's milk <laughs> cheese, smear ripened, washed rind in brandy. Oh, it does sound quite nice. That with a crusty loaf, perhaps? Well, as you know, with my uh, coal stones, I can't eat cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you swine. The, the description was almost as good as eating it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was that what it was Benji hoping for me to say Baby Bell or something? <laughs> well, there is a certain... What's Benji's favourite cheese? It's my favourite. Um, I love a baked camembert myself, if we're going down the cheese route. Oh yeah, lovely. Who doesn't like one of those? Yes, but but a, a well matured cheddar goes down well as a bog standard day to day cheese. Yeah, they're always good. Ones that makes your gums tingle a bit. Yeah, you know it has to has to be <laughs> has to be Sorry. thoroughly matured. <laughs> if I knew could see your face right now, I miss it so much. But then I think of the pain it causes me, and then I don't miss it at all. I had a cheese and bacon burger yesterday, you know, a bacon cheeseburger in a local eatery. I said, can I have it without the cheese? And the chef was there, and he said, no, that's impossible. I said, I know, it's in the name, isn't it? And he said, yeah, yeah, we'll take the cheese out. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there we yeah, are. Yeah, we ended up we talking about food. I have to just share with everyone the outrageous thing my wife said yesterday, which I think you know about, Jamie. Do you know what she said? What does she say? She said, I think I'm done with food. Oh, yeah. What? (laughs) (laughs) That's what I said. How can you be done with food? She said, I've been eating food for 50 years now. I don't don't, don't think I want it. You know what? what? Just... She's a monster. (laughs) (laughs) One can never have too much food. Well, I made a joke where she said, I think that lunch I had was a bit rich. I don't really like it. I said, well, would you want to go go back to eating cardboard and drinking water? She said, yeah. <laughs> oh. Can't be doing with that. Bread and I mean, water. Done with food. Although later there was a complete contradiction. She said, um, I'm going to make a cup of coffee. Do you want one? And uh, with uh, an apple lattice pastry, pastry lattice. Mm. And she said, you don't have to because I'll quite apt. I quite happily eat both of them. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> with a mischievous a look on her face. So she's a monster and a fibber. <laughs> Inconsistent. Yeah, doesn't bode I think well. The you're looking for. She always says, yeah. "I don't really like chocolate." And then if there's some chocolate, she says, "Oh, I'll have that." And I go, "But you don't like it?" She said, "Well, I don't hate it." <laughs> Lots of married men are uh, rolling their eyes currently. Yeah. Yeah, I've been there, mate. Been there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with that bit of covert misogyny, uh, we'll. Uh, <laughs> oh damn! It's out in the open now. Um, I'll say goodbye to you, Jamie. It's a pleasure yeah. speaking, and sorry that when I hold the phone so close, you just get like my nose in the picture. Beard and nose interior, so it's. You know. Oh, 
nose and hearing. <laughs> and then you're, it's lovely, isn't it? You're completely out of focus because you're too close for my glasses. Right. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Pleasure. Thanks for coming. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Well, there well, you are. That was just the thought of him looking up my nose the whole time. It's rather made me feel rather real. Well, you never know what's up there. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we all do. A couple of bits of Lego or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do we do? Do we do we uh, watch Revenge of the Cybermen Part Four and do a commentary? Do we do what we've been watching, or the traditional Benji and Nick show? Choose a program. I think Revenge of the Cybermen is probably probably about time to finish that one off isn't it okay so we've yes because we've done we did what what we're watching last week this week was crack ass next week commentary i suppose well, i know well, i was just being a bit anarchic no yeah. but let's let's stick to the the, the regular yes yeah, stick to the regular format stick yes. to the format stick to the format so it will be revenge of the cybermen part four and we'll also be looking at your email when well so do send them in to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com and we'll be very delighted to read out a lovely selection thank you for listening i'm very close to the mic yes it's been an absolute pleasure and so on behalf of benji from the benji nick show it's goodbye goodbye pressing stop now ka-chunk